In this video, I will demonstrate how to generate a Tor address and serve a basic WordPress website publicly to Tor users without needing to pay anyone for hosting. Let's get started. First, you'll need the Debian operating system installed somewhere with internet access. I'm not going to show you how to install Debian in this video, but if you don't already have it, consider searching YouTube for how to install Debian, or watch my YouTube tutorial called How to Set Up a Remote Desktop in BitClouds. You can find a link in this video's description. Once you've got Debian installed, log in as root and update it. apt update y and apt upgrade y and apt auto remove y. By the way, you can find all the commands you need to follow along with me in this video's description. The next command installs four things. PHP is the programming language WordPress is written in. PHP FPM is an extension which lets PHP run in the background on your machine. PHP MySQL is another extension. It lets PHP work with some database software that we will install later when we build a WordPress site. Lastly, it installs Nginx, which is a file server program that we will use as a basic web server. Now we have to configure Nginx. The next set of commands removes the default configuration file because by default Nginx isn't set up to work with PHP. Then we replace it by running some echo commands which create a configuration file that is set up to work with PHP. We're not done writing the configuration file yet, but I wanted to pause here because of a potential problem that you might encounter when following this tutorial in the future. In the next line you'll see something that looks like php 7.3 fpmsoc when you run this command, the 7.3 might need to be different depending on what version of PHP is installed on your machine. The latest version of Debian, Debian Buster, uses an application repository which installs PHP version 7.3 when you run the command apt install PHP. But some Debian offshoots, like Ubuntu, install PHP 7.2 when you run the same command. If you don't know which version of PHP you have installed, run the command where is PHP 7 to find out. On my system, it says PHP 7.3 is installed in my bin directory, so that's what I've put here. But the PHP version number in Debian is likely to change in the future. If or when PHP upgrades to PHP 8, and then PHP 9, and so forth, you may have to search for those instead of PHP 7. Anyway, after finding what version of PHP you have by running where is PHP 7, or PHP 8, or PHP 9, or whatever, put the version number that shows up when you run that command in place of 7.3 below. Okay, now let's start the Nginx server. We do this using a program called System Control, which manages a lot of low-level programs in Debian. First we en enable Nginx, then we start it. Now let's install Tor. You can learn more about Tor in a previous video, but in this video we're going to use one of the features of Tor, which is that it lets you publish your website on the World Wide Web for free, so that any unenabled browser can visit it. apt install Tor. Configure Tor by telling it you are going to create a website, which I'll call Tor Website, and that it should also create a directory for your Tor website in another directory called Tor. This is a good time to tell you a little bit about directories in the Debian operating system. Debian has a number of directories called system directories, which are where basic system files are installed by default. Some applications, such as Tor, also use these system directories to store data that they will need to access during normal operations. The first directory you see here is called var. That means variable. The variable directory is where Tor will look for data that might be different for different people. For example, when I start Tor in a few moments, it doesn't automatically know that I want to serve files to people. Some people might want to do that, others might want to do something else. To find out what I want to do, Tor will look in the variable directory in a subdirectory called lib, meaning libraries. The libraries directory was originally intended to store pieces of computer code called libraries, which are pieces of code that are shared by several similar programs. The libraries directory ended up getting used to store other shared files too, besides just libraries, but the name stuck around. Anyway, Tor installs its own subdirectory called Tor within the libraries directory, and that's where it looks for information about Tor hidden services. On the right side of the arrows, you'll see two other directories, etc and tor. etc is where Debian stores system configuration files. Tor has a subdirectory here too, called tor, and torrc is the configuration file for tor. The echo command on the far left means write the stuff in quotes. The arrows tell the echo command where to write the stuff in quotes. Altogether, it's saying, write down in the tor configuration file that tor should create a hidden service directory called tor website in the tor directory, which is in the libraries directory, which is in the variable directory. 
The next line tells Tor where to take people who type in the onion address of my Tor website, which will be generated when we start Tor. If anyone enters my Tor address into the Tor browser, the Tor browser will ask my computer for whatever data I am serving on port 80, which is the standard port for serving website files. The line here tells Tor that when someone requests port 80, show them port 80 of my computer, the local host, not someone else's computer or some other port. The next command is called change mode. It is used for adding some metadata to a file identifying who can access it, that is, changing a file's mode of access. We'll be changing the mode of files within var lib tor, and the r flag tells the change mode command to apply the change to all files within the specified directory. Mode 700 means that I, the root user, can modify these files, but other users cannot. Now we'll use system control to enable and start tor. We'll also restart Tor, because for reasons I haven't identified yet, Tor sometimes doesn't generate a new onion address the first time I start it, but it works when I restart it. Technically we have a website now, though all it shows right now is the Nginx welcome page. We'll change what your website shows in a minute, but let's look up that page just to make sure everything's working. The onion address of our website can be located with the following command. cat varlib tor tor website hostname. Cat means concatenate, which is when you add one piece of text to another. Here we are actually just adding some text to our terminal, but concatenate works for that too. The text comes from a file called hostname, which is where our freshly generated Tor address should be. Tor created a few files in our Tor website directory when we started it, and one of those files is the hostname. The result of the concatenate command should be a jumble of numbers and letters ending in .onion. That's your Tor address. Use any device that has an Onion-compatible browser to view it. In this example, I'll use the Brave browser, which has a Tor-compatible mode if you click the menu and select New Private Window with Tor. Now let's visit our Onion address and view our website. It takes Brave a few seconds to connect to this website because it has to locate a path through the Tor network, and that path involves encrypting and decrypting a lot of stuff, but it will get a lot faster after it has found its path. There it is, our Nginx welcome page. We can add whatever files we want to serve, such as web pages, to the directory var www.html. This is a publicly accessible directory on our computer, which Nginx makes available on port 80 on our local machine, and which Tor is exposing at our onion address. In this example, I will create an empty zip file called test.zip. If I visit my Tor address and add slash test.zip, Brave will prepare to download it. Note that I could place any file in that directory to make it publicly accessible. It doesn't have to be a zip file. It could be a video file, an audio file, or anything. I've done this test to show that you can use Tor to serve any file to other Tor users, and this may come in handy in a future video when I show you how to accept payment in Bitcoin for digital goods. But for my next example, we're going to serve a WordPress website, not a zip file or a video file or anything else. So I will now download WordPress and create a basic WordPress site. In order to run a WordPress site, we first need database software because WordPress is heavily reliant on databases. I recommend Maria Database because it is free, open source, and based on the popular MySQL program, which means it will work with the PHP extension we installed earlier. apt install Maria Database Server and apt install Maria Database Client. Run Maria Database. MariaDB. Your terminal will change slightly when you run Maria Database. Create a WordPress database by entering the command create database WordPress semicolon. Next, we will create a user called admin and tell Maria Database that he is a user on this computer rather than a remote one. In typical Linux terms, this means our user is located at the local host. We will also tell Maria Database what password the admin will use. Make sure to replace the word password with an actual secure password, though in this example I'm just going to use 12345 because I will be deleting this website shortly anyway and it doesn't need to be secure. The following commands should be run one by one. Grant all on WordPress to admin at localhost. This command grants the administrator complete power over every piece of data in the WordPress database. The dot asterisk after WordPress is a character code for a programming tool called Regular Expressions, which is primarily for selecting and manipulating text. The dot expression means any character, and the asterisk means repeated. Together it means if there is any letter, number, or other character in the WordPress database, or a bunch of characters making up words, sentences, paragraphs, or anything else, the admin should have power to access and modify all of that. In other words, this command gives the administrator total power over the WordPress database. The next command is flush privileges. This command refreshes a part of Maria database that controls access to stuff, allowing our changes to take effect. Then we exit. 
Great, now your database is installed and configured. The last thing we need to do is install WordPress. First, we'll change the directory we're working in to our home directory and download the latest version of WordPress using the command wget, which means webget. This command is used for downloading files from the internet. WebGet obtained a type of file for us called a tar file, which is similar to a zip file in Windows. Next, we'll use the tar command to unzip the tar file and replace everything in our current HTML directory with WordPress. We'll also clean up our working directory by removing the tar file from it as well as the copy of WordPress that was extracted from it. We will also need to change some permissions within our publicly accessible website directory. chown means change ownership. The ownership of a file determines who can view that file. The R flag tells the change ownership command to apply its changes to all files in the specified directory, and the www data part is a user which is built into Debian, who only has the ability to view publicly accessible files on our server but not change them. This user is also part of a group named the same thing, www-data, and that's why the name appears twice with a colon in between. It's Debian's way of saying the owner is www-data, and the group he is in is www-data. We'll also use the find command to take all of the directories and change their access mode to 755, which means that anyone can access them. If we didn't do that, people could only view the home page, but not any other page. Then we'll do something similar to all of the files and change their access mode to 644, which means everyone can view those files, but only the owner of the files can modify them. Lastly, we reload Nginx now that our website is set up the way we want. Everything's done on the server, we can finish setting WordPress up by visiting our website in an Onion-compatible browser. I'll select English as my language. Click Continue, then click Let's Go. In the form that follows, keep the database name as WordPress and change the username to admin because that's the user we created earlier when we were setting up Maria Database. Let's change the password to the one we set earlier too. In this case it's 12345, which is obviously insecure and something you should never use on a real website, but this is just a test site that I'll delete after this tutorial, so it's okay in this case. Keep the database host as localhost and the table prefix as wp underscore, then hit submit. Now click run the installation. Give your site a title. I'll call mine test site. Use admin as your username and set a secure password for your user. Again, don't use 12345 on your real site. In fact, WordPress will warn me that I'm using an insecure password and make me confirm that I want to do it just because WordPress wants to keep me safe. Type your email and then decide if you want your site to be accessible to search engines. If you don't, check the box, otherwise keep it unchecked. Click install WordPress. You're done. You can now log in and manage your WordPress site at your Onion address slash wp-login.php, or you can visit your Onion address to view your website. This is your WordPress backend. Here you can install plugins, change your theme, create pages and posts, modify WordPress's settings, and basically control everything about your site. You can also hover over your site name and click Visit Site if you want to see how it looks. This is the default WordPress appearance as of June 2020, but it's easy to change what your site looks like by changing the theme. Look up WordPress tutorials for more information. The amazing thing here is that within only 10 to 15 minutes, we've gotten a WordPress website set up and made it publicly available on the internet. And it only took me that long because I was explaining every step. If you just copy-pasted the commands I used, you could set up your WordPress website in only 2 or 3 minutes. That's all for now, but I'll be releasing more videos soon. Like, share, subscribe, and click the little bell to receive notifications when I make a new video. Follow me on Twitter, too. I'm at HighLevelBTC. Let me know on Twitter, or in the comments section, if there's a Bitcoin software project you'd like me to explain or do a demo of. You can also check out my website, HighLevelBitcoin.com, for more information. Stay tuned.